It happened when I was seven years old. There was a small wig factory in my neighborhood, and lots of hair was always rolling around in front of the factory. I could see lots of men and women busily carrying boxes into the car. In addition, mannequin heads were scattered around the factory, so I sometimes played with them, kicking like a soccer ball. However, at some point, the people who were busy working at the wig factory were not seen, and there were many days when the shutters were always closed. One day when I was walking by the factory with my mom, she looked at the closed factory and said, They said wigs don't sell very well these days. I guess they're going to close the factory. A few days later, I was playing hide-and-seek with my friends in the neighborhood until dinner time. It was a long winter day, so it was already dark, and I, who was a tagger, couldn't find one of my friends. When I finally gave up, he showed up and said he was hiding in the wig factory. How did you get in when the shutters were closed? When you go to the back of the door, there's a pile of boxes on the wall, and you could step on them and go in through the window. There was a shelf under the window, so you could step on it and come back out. I thought it was a good idea. And as soon as the next tagger was decided, I ran to the factory with one friend. It was very easy to step on the box and go inside, as he said. The moonlight came through the window so we could see inside the factory. Mannequin heads with wigs on them were lined on the shelves. Since they were all looking at the wall, we could only see the back of the mannequin's head. Now that I think about it, I would have been chilled to see all the black hairs, but it would have been no big deal for a seven-year-old who was just distracted by hide-and-seek. So me and my friend waited for the tagger, giggling with each other. But there was no sign of him when time went by. We eventually came out of the window again and decided to play one last game before going to dinner. I became a tagger again this time. After counting ten, I went around looking for my friends and finally, the last two were left. I grinned and headed straight to the wig factory and shouted as I pushed my face through the window. I won't be fooled twice. I know you're there, so get out of there. I went to the window to find friends who didn't answer. And then I felt something different from before. One of the heads of the mannequins, which were all looking at the wall, was looking at me. The moment I made eye contact with it, I felt like my whole body was electrocuted and my heart dropped because the mannequin had a torso unlike other mannequins. I was so surprised that I started screaming and crying, but no one came to see me as if they didn't hear me. The mannequin was constantly shaking from side to side or moving little by little, spinning in place. When I came to my senses, I took the courage to come closer to it and I could see its face was very pale and the eyes were unfocused. It was an old man. He was hanging from the ceiling on the pillar next to the shelf, and his face and his body were facing me as the rope turned. Being surprised, I immediately left the window and ran home crying. I told my parents all the truth as soon as I arrived, and they also reported to the police immediately, feeling serious. My dad, who went to the factory, kept comforting me in case I was terrified and shocked. However, I ended up suffering from what happened that day as a nightmare for a fairly long time. Later, according to the conversation of the elders in the neighborhood, the wig factory was suffering from financial difficulties. And the owner of the factory, who was in debt because of it, eventually closed the factory that day and hung himself and a suicide note was also found nearby. The corpse I saw for the first time in my immature days gave me a mental trauma. And after that, I could no longer watch the scene that people hang themselves in movies or dramas, even now. <laughs>